Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we are unboxing one of the most interesting kits available on the 32nd scale market today, Zuki Mura's Horton HO229 Flying Wing. This is part of Zuki Mura's Super Wing series and it is their kit number 8. This is one of the most famous innovations produced during late days of World War II by the Germans. The whole concept was out of this world and it featured a lot of ideas and engineering decisions that amaze to this very day. Zuki Mura presented us with a box similar to that you saw in my HE219 Yuhu review. Yellow and very high quality material. On the sides there are some pictures of the built airplane including some shots of the separate highlights of the kit. The Jumo 004 engines as well as the airframe are visible and here Zukimura shows their engineering concept when it comes down to kits. Almost everything you can think of can be built and shown. The kit features semi-transparent outer parts and that is because you can use the transparency to make everything completely or partially visible and still keep the overall shape of this beautiful flying wing. The internal framework is presented and that gives you a whole new perspective in terms of modeling options. Too bad that everything on the box is written in Japanese and non-Japanese speakers can only guess what is described. However, a picture is worth a thousand words saying is perfectly suitable here. As you can see, the engines, the framework, the cockpit and the landing gear, everything is here and it holds great potential. Maybe some room for super detailing is left too for those who are not happy with the kit. But I doubt that there will be many unhappy modelers with this piece here. The safety description is in English besides Japanese which is great. This is one of the few kits that says 15 plus years of age. Often others use 12 or 14. And you can guess why. With that many sub-assemblies and such a complex looking internal structure, this is pretty normal. What surprised me was the fact that the box says that this kit is made in China. Interesting decision from the Japanese maker, probably purely economical one. Removing the cover with the box art, we see a cardboard box with the flip-flop cover just like we have in Zvezda kits. Although quality here is around 100 times better. The cardboard is sturdy and thick and give impression of high quality product. Opening the flap we can find the sprue separated into two sections. The one packed with the instruction leaflet came separately from the box but with the same parcel. I will get to that in a minute. Everything is neatly packed and arranged. No overcrowding of the box is visible and unlike Dragon and some Trumpeter, once you remove the sprues from the box, here you could put them back and still be able to close the lid without any hassle. I was very surprised with the quality of the envelopes. They do look very thin but it is quite interesting that they possess other qualities too. The material that they are made of is flexible enough but in the same time protects the parts one from another and I mean those in different envelopes of course. That is a decision that you might think as a minor one but we are having a bunch of transparent surfaces here and they should be kept safe. Small things but with genius ideas behind them. In the end we have a nice package with the instructions, mask, a leaflet and the decals. Everything is done with the style and obviously a lot of finesse. Now let's not waste any more time and get to see what we have in detail. It will be very exciting, I can promise you that. The booklet that we get in the set of this Horton 229 is in red brown color resembling old slightly worn technical material issued by Horton. It says Die Bauleitung which translates as construction manual and also features a stamp on it with the word Geheim which means secret. All bearing the spirit of the era just like Zukimura did with their Yuhu instructions that we recently reviewed. 
Of course, alongside this you can see Zuki Mura written in the stamp and below reminding about the Japanese maker and that this, after all, is a scale model kit. The booklet features contents just like any regular book and it is divided into sections. One picture of the real thing to start things up followed by several parts within the building process is spread throughout. Then of course a description of the Horton 229 and what the kit is based on exactly plus some explanation of the highlights of the real thing, engines, armament and so on. Everything that might help one that bought this kit not knowing what HO229 was but I think that such clients won't be many especially for Zukimura kits. Opening the next page, we have completed plane schematics with Tsukimura design concepts all over. Besides the concept note that you might want to get, Zuki filled the instruction with hints called design concepts, which will help you understand the idea of the engineering and building better. Eventually, will make you a better modeler overall. Also, a more detailed part description of the building steps of the flying wing plus basic explanation what is what in this instruction booklet. That includes the difficulty levels and the decal options too. On the very next page we have the basic tools needed and the paint guide using Vallejo color codes. Using Vallejo as paint guide is not common, but one thing we got to admit to this manufacturer. Their RLM colors are awesome and if you want to avoid any troubles with the correct coloring, this is the way to go although you might encounter some other troubles while painting. But this is another story. Engines are the first thing to do here being properly shown in their almost full potential. The very first time I saw the instruction sheet it struck me with the level of detailing and the devotion Zuki Mura demonstrated with this particular section. The engines are more than complete. They feature rotors and stators, intake, turbine nozzle and combustion chamber. All this is supported with design concept and perfectly done pictures of the engine internals. I have studied jet engines and I can assure you that this looks more like a study tool than an instruction manual for a scale model kit. The plastic parts are many and overall look of the engines is quite busy. Maybe very little room for super detailing is left for the mulling maniacs, but even with that in mind, know that Zuki Mura tried to do the engine almost in its 100%. The option that they left for us at the end is to have the engines taken out and left on a stand, which is support for those who want to put them next to the built airplane and not waste their hours of work hiding everything within the fuselage. And the fuselage come next in the booklet. Of course, this is shown firstly with the engines installed and carefully divided into different steps. This is because the frame tubing of the flying wing as shown here is very complex and a lot of careful work and attention is required to do the whole assembly without troubles. As always, Zuke tried to provide us with thorough instructions and ease up the job. But make no mistake, this won't be an easy task and it will be very challenging for beginner modelers. It is done in a way that requires from you test your intellect and knowledge, definitely not for the simple minded. This is Japanese engineering, it screams finesse and complexity at every single step of the build. We all know that as a nation Japanese are among the most sophisticated one, if not the most sophisticated nation of people on earth. Looking at this part of the instruction sheet, we have the written proof for that. It is truly amazing what Zuke did with this kit and its internals. Of course, with all the explanation, this won't be that scary as you might think of it at the first glance. You will be able to work it through building it carefully one step after another. But still, this left me speechless. What is about to come from Zuki Mura in the near future is more than exciting. The kit is already 3 years old and technology is getting better and better. With it comes many new options that companies can use and embed within their kits. As you might have guessed, Zuki are not waiting things to happen, they made things happen. This kit is a great example for that. 
The cockpit comes next. At first glance everything is hidden behind the tubing frame and in between the engines. But once you get to see inside the beautiful dashboard appears. There are two options on how to do it, but the most important thing to notice here is that there are many colors to be used. This is another great German innovation, the colored dashboard. And not only, the colors in the cockpit too. They were introduced by one of the Focke Wolf's trainers and became standard for every aircraft flying later on, not German, but in general. So you can prepare here for a bright and interesting dashboard. There is a decal option that you can use with this thing here. In my experience I always prefer to use the good old brush with the paints. Natural worn effects can be done and you can control the vividness of the coloring too. It isn't much but it adds touch to everything. Then we have the landing gear. As far as I know there are substitutes for this from Zuki Mura themselves. The struts and the wheels are available as aftermarket parts Although, as you will see shortly, there is nothing wrong with those. We have some room for super detailing, unfortunately no information to do that. The proper angles are depicted in the grease as we have seen in their F4 and Yuhu kits. Precision means a lot, obviously, and devoted modelers know that by heart. Same goes for the IPMS judges at the major competitions. The outer layers of the model follow and I will talk about those later on since they deserve some special attention. Bear in mind that they are transparent, so not to lose everything you might have worked so hard to build so far. I am a bit puzzled by how exactly this should be glued and the only thing that comes into my mind is white glue. The instruction sheet continues with air brake and the engine scowling, the latter on being crystal clear in order to show off the upper part of the engine itself. I am guessing that those covers can be down positionable too, for those who want to paint everything all over. Everything continues with the wings, which are the beauty of this German engineering miracle. Once again we have the airplane completely built here, which gives me the goosebumps. This is more than 70 years old and still looks extremely fascinating. Maybe not the most sophisticated camo though. The whole structure is replicated here, plus the tanks and some of the lines in between them. In reality a mix of materials were used, so you will have a lot to think about and a lot to paint if you want to properly do and weather the internals. That makes the kit challenging, not the complexity, but the mindset you will need to get into that project. The external control surfaces, which were another superb innovation here, are presented with some options too. In general, you can see for yourself that the airplane is almost a full copy of the original, or at least what the scale allows you to do. There are many design concepts embedded, and once again I would suggest getting Zuke Mura's concept note for this particular build. The concept note holds example builds in different modeling approaches which can come handy. They are made from devoted professional modelers which Zuke trusted. Supposedly, you can trust them too. The final step of the airplane build are next, including seat, gear doors and minor add-ons plus the canopy which presents a great deal of interest for me. It is very fluid in shape and obviously for the time was a great innovation. Here there are some options UK left for us as well. Ejection seat is another highlight of this kit. Once you get to see the plastic you will see why. Here too we have many options alongside with options for the canopy. It can be done from one single piece of plastic or from two different mediums. I think that here everything depends on how bare naked you want your airplane to be once you complete it. We have a lot of parts which aren't supposed to be glued alongside Zuke design concepts that can help you get through. And of course everything is sectored so you cannot miss an important thing. Good job, Zuki. Finally, we have the camouflage options. Those I won't discuss in depth, since they are mostly what if, 
of that beast of an aircraft. Unfortunately, they were never realized. What I should add is that it is pretty much a standard German camo scheme. And don't forget it will hide all the efforts on the interior that you eventually put in. Instruction leaflet ends with description of the sprues and some table with prices made for the Japanese market. You should be able to use those if you contact Zuki Mura via email, but for their local market there is an option for mail order of some kind via the cutaway ticket you can fill out and send. It is true that many companies offer support, but this looks very tempting here. Hopefully you will never get to use it, but if you do, I suppose wherever on the planet you are, via the modern technologies, you will be able to get through to Zukimura, and I am more than sure that they will help you out with spares. Alongside with the instruction sheet, there are a few things packed in the same bag. First one we'll look at is the fan club leaflet. Unfortunately, this is only in Japanese. However, what I saw in Yuhu kit and here too, this looks like a way to join Zukimura's fan club. Super Wing series are pure awesomeness and they deserve special attention which probably is granted once you get to be a member. Maybe if you are seriously interested you can email Zuki and ask them for specifics or have somebody who knows Japanese help you out with the leaflet. Then we have a mask set for the canopy parts and relatively big decal sheet of this Horton H229 flying wing. Being kind of an expert on masks, I want to start with those first. They are made from thin green foil with outlines of the cuts visible. This is due to the shrinking of the material which is normal for most of the foils used for mask making. However, this is pretty small amount of shrinking and I can assure you that the material used by Zuke Mura is top notch. Then the decal sheet. The first thing that impresses are the vivid colors. In the same time looking pretty natural, they are bright enough to create the attention needed. We have three sets of numbers, white, red and yellow. So pretty much your imagination is the limit to the final creation that you can do with this flying wing. The transparent film around every decal is limited to its possible minimum helping avoid any silvering. Probably some of you won't use all of these decals here since many will try to replicate bare wood or bare metal parts instead. However, the quality of everything, especially the technical markings, is superb and the thickness of the material seems to be very good for 30 second scale. There are swastikas too as well as warning dashed lines. Usually the first one is missing on some kits at all due to country regulations and the second one is problematic due to thin and long appearance. All in all, very good looking set with the mandatory note that this airplane can be done with most of those decals only in what if version. Next thing I will show you was above my box inside the same parcel I got. It is a transparent spare part replacing the kit's original item featured on the spruce. Until I get to build the thing, I cannot tell you what exactly is being changed here or slightly altered maybe. What I can tell you is that there is a separate instruction leaflet and nicely molded transparent main landing gear door. Everything was carefully packed and it makes a nice impression that Zuki Mura did a great job setting everything quite generously adding this detail to the already packed kit and my parcel. Now let's take a look at the unusual transparent spruce. First one we're going to take a quick look at is the sprue with the inner parts of the flying wing or let's call it the fuselage. Fuselage is not the correct term here, only partially. But let's go with that for the review. First thing to note is the milkish appearance of the plastic. You can still see through it but it's blurry. The outer layer details are still there 
and with the same quality as if they were made from the standard materials. On the inner side, there are some rounds, looking like ejector pin marks, but they left me in doubt, is this the case here? Anyway, priming this and you will have no trace of transparency for sure. Besides, not everybody wants their kits overcomplicated in appearance. However, a nice touch indeed, giving us the option. In my opinion, there is no difference from what the plastic is made of. Grey, green, yellow or transparent. It looks all the same if you decide to cover it with paint in the end. We have two equal sprues with the upper and lower halves of the wings. The shape of the wings is extremely beautiful. This jet can serve as an inspiration for many, even 70 years later. They do look like sabers when in halves, and once the whole the wing looks like boomerang. This is sprue N, and the quality and appearance is pretty much the same as with the previous sprue we saw. There are cutaways for the spoilers, the most important element of the flying wing control system. The edges are sharp and thin. The surface is smooth, showing no defect whatsoever. Interesting thing about those clear sprues with the milkish appearance plastic is that the frame of the sprue is actually more clear than the parts themselves. This means that probably the slightly blurred appearance is additionally altered, which impresses a lot. Overall, this sprue is one responsible for the general shape of the aircraft, so you can guess how it will look as well as the size of the bird itself. The next sprue is the engine covers, which are perfectly clear as well as all other parts on that sprue. This too classifies as a clear sprue, but its appearance is different than the previous one. Probably some of you have visited the major air shows where jet engine manufacturers display cutaways of their newest designs showing all of the internals moving. Zuke did the same here, opting the engine to be fully visible. Not only this, but the quality is flawless. We have parts of the canopy as well, and overall those parts are with the same appearance and thickness as the engine covers. Superb idea that is unexpected by many and I think will be warmly welcomed and exploited by professional modelers. As with the other kits from Zuke, I was pleasantly surprised by the overall thickness of the clear materials. In case you remember my review of F4 and 48 scale, you know what I mean. You can read through those glass parts and still they are delicate enough. And I mean you can read the instructions through them. Many companies struggle with even their newest additions being with a lot of defects. Not here. Then we have an envelope divided into three parts with internal barrier in between sections. Here we have two clears for the canopy and a very sophisticated front part of the flying wing. This is the non-stealth part of the Horton 229 due to the round shape of the intakes which usually glow a lot on the radars. It is a pleasant surprise for Uzuki Mura that they did that part into one single piece so to avoid troubles if modelers work on it and using halves. We have the same milkish appearance of the plastic and wonderful detail which is more clearly visible due to the fact that you can see from the both sides of the plastic and they are very close one to another. Difference is obvious. Perfect shape of the intakes, a lot less troubles for the builder. Then we have a single piece canopy which by itself is a very interesting part. It features transparent material but with both crystal clear and milkish appearance. This piece here speaks about the mixture of the two clear materials loud enough. It is thin and with shape that inspires. And of course we have the crystal clear parts like the dashboard, the windshield and the clear parts of the canopy which is supposed to go with the grey plastic framing. With those parts I think that most impressive thing is the clarity. The dashboard, when clear, gives you a whole lot of new options to explore 
and the canopy with the separate parts can be left aside from the plane. Very flexible decisions for the whole kit. Now let's take a look at the classic grey plastic parts. First I want to show you the two identical sprues with the engine parts on them. This is sprue A and I think this is almost one model by itself. Many lines from the engine are featured here as well as the sub-assemblies of different minor parts from it. We have the casings and the shaft and the nozzle. I was most impressed by the rotors and the stators though. It looks like you can build this thing into a show example and make it almost workable with some additional effort. Not that this will be that needed, but again, an option from Zukimura. Rotors show delicacy as well as impress with their obvious difference compared to other kits where everything is often blended into one piece plastic with strange appearance. We have a definite engine parts here, not the regular chunks of plastic which reminds you of the real thing. And even better, we have two of them. Great thing that Horton 229 is a twin jet flying wing. Try to count all the stages here, just quickly. And all this goes inside. If you are devoted, this will be painted and properly weathered. If you are a pro, you will most definitely cut the shell to show off the internals. This cannot be found anywhere else, only with Zukemura kits. Then we have the wings and the fuel tanks which are on sprue I. Clearly defined spars and ribs with the plastic molded in between them to keep the whole thing in the proper shape. No bendings, no troubles. No flash and no defects here, so the cleaning will be mostly on the shape holders. Don't underestimate the amount of work though, we have many of those here. Also, the minor additional parts on that sprue are done with great precision. The other larger ones behind the tanks featured great texture. They do have some flash on the seam lines, but nothing that needs to be addressed especially. Here the work cleaning will be a lot less, but they will be painted with metalizers, so you gotta be careful. Everything seems perfectly nice so far, and I don't see any troubles with those sprues, even though they are not transparent. But let's not that fact fool you. They are great as well as the other ones we just saw. Zukemura quality is all over the kit, so no doubt about it you'll be more and more surprised as we go through the kit and move along forward looking at the other sprues. Next we have another envelope with three separate sections. This time we have the wing profiles. These parts are separated because the plane is divided into three parts. Two wings, left and right, each holding a profile like that in its end, in the root, and the fuselage which needs a profile of the wing because it is the wing itself and that goes left and right for it too. The molding here represents stunning details with very little troubles being a few ejector pin marks. This goes for all the sprues by the way. They are divided more to ease you up than for any other reason. The quality of the tree is pretty much the same here. Although there are differences in between the shape of the inner ones versus the outer ones. The kit will help you learn aircraft engineering, that's for sure, and this isn't a joke. I am being perfectly honest here. You will have to read through and know a lot before you start building that thing. Next is sprue R. This is more of a regular sprue with details that we can find in every aircraft kit. 
It features some ejector pin marks on the inside and the detail is like on every normal kit. This only helps you get the idea how much more complex things are with the rest of the sprues. Not that this is a flaw sprue or anything like that. It just looked normal, like with every other kit. But the difference with the rest is obvious, right? What we'll see next is sprue O. This is the sprue with the wheels, the struts and the mud guard of the front wheel. This is one very big, very nicely done part, extremely accurately done from what I know and it looks awesome. Wonderful texturing on the wheels too. Unfortunately, they obviously caught the dragon disease with the Continental that we have there, here being Continental. Apparently the company is hard to be bargained with about rights. Great rims and minor parts too. Nothing way too special here, both the wheels and the struts have aftermarket substitutes. They look nice and some improvements can be made, especially with the tire names of course. Maybe you should check out Zuki Imura's site and see how the aftermarket competes with this here. Then we have another interesting sprue called Sprue D. It features, again, complex parts, mechanical lines, smaller details and everything is molded with great precision. This sprue helps a lot with understanding the way that airplanes are built in general. The sub-assemblies here will give you a lot to think about, read and ask. This is learning tool of a kit. The guns are here too, featuring a lot more detail than what I'm used to get, especially from older 30 second scale kits. For those, I believe there are two aftermarket substitutes available, so again, check Zuki Mura's website to see if I'm right. Then we have a mixed sprue with field tanks, mechanical lines and other more simple parts. This is sprue L. The tanks are done in the same delicate manner as the ones we have seen on the previous sprue. They do require very little work in order to be perfect, even though most of the sides of these won't be seen once embedded into the wings, they will be painted in metal colors, so you need to work your way through them, prep them properly and then paint them. You know, using metallizers almost every time shows every single small defect that you left out there and you need to check repair, paint again. The rest of the parts on that sprue feature details inside and out which is great and again shows the devotion that Zuki put into this flying wing. On the next sprue we have one of the major tubing frame structures as well as parts of the leading edge shaping ribs. The two seat options are also here. The seat parts and the rib parts are greatly detailed, featuring minor but interesting features which will be undoubtedly exploited by the pro modelers to their maximum. The tubing frame have many attachment points and needs a thorough cleaning and attention. This is one of the most complex parts of that kit and be advised that your full attention will be required here, from the point where you start detaching it from the sprue to the final assembly. The seat belts are especially nice and even though there are aftermarket options for that, those won't be needed here, I can assure you. As you can see, every part has its special qualities and this is all over the kit, on every sprue. Sprue B comes next. Here the tubing continues with its full potential. I repeat myself, but have in mind that this is very complex and probably the most challenging part of the kit. The canopy frame is here too. That is, if you decide to use different mediums for it or leave it on its bare frame. Many interesting design decisions as well as many minor parts. On some of the details the texturing is as close as you can get to resin, so out of the box build will be quite acceptable overall, 
not only for this kit actually, but for all Zuki Mura kits that I've seen. This is my credo. To be honest, I prefer out of the box for every kit where you can spread out your abilities as a modeler and show off your personal talents. Especially nice is the dashboard too, which I already mentioned in the instructions review. The frame of the front windshield too. Zuki put a lot of effort into making the command center of this flying wing as good as possible. Nice details all around engineering. 3D appearance on many parts. Pretty much that last sentence sums it up. One of the most impressive kits on the market today of one of the most impressive birds from the World War II by one of the most impressive companies out there nowadays. So let's wrap this review up. First I want to sincerely thank Zuki Mura for honoring me with this astonishing kit for my review. For me this is special plane being, first, one of my all time favorites as a plane and engineering miracle, and second, the very first plane that I tested on Airbrush on 20 years ago. Not this kit of course, but something in smaller scale. But let's back to Zuki Mura. This company sets new standards in the business. With the clear parts, internals, engines and overall engineering decisions, they do set the bar extremely high for all the competition. Maybe there are some competitive sets like the Mia's new 30 second scale props, but the line of those is quite limited. Here we have many airplanes with similar features to what you just saw and all Zuki Muras. There is an upcoming Focke Wolves 190 and as far as I know Henschel 129 is in the works. Besides, Zuke offers some of their kits in 48 scale too, this one included. So for those who are still in doubt, don't be. Order this kit and trust me, I am saying this with all my honesty and with my pragmatic thinking. This is a state of the art item, an item with no competition whatsoever. Thank you for watching this long review, stay tuned for more and be sure to subscribe. Comment down below, hit the like button and I will see you in the next one.